Hello, everyone, and welcome to Score Fail for County's live webinar on digital marketing and content strategies for your business. Our webinar today is sponsored by First County Bank. I'm Bob Hogan, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at Score Fairfield County. I'm going to be your host today, and our presenter is Kate Berg. More on Kate in just a minute, but uh, first, some brief information on SCORE. If I could ask you, Kate, to move to the next slide. SCORE is a national nonprofit national partner of the SBA, and locally here at SCORE Fairfield County, we have over 100 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise. And we offer three primary value-added services to small business owners. First of all, we offer free one-on-one -on -one counseling, and you can access that either in person, by, via video, or via email, or via phone, whatever works best for you. And you can do that by using the yellow bit.ly link that you see on the screen, or you can go to our website, www.fairfieldcounty.score.org, and click on Request a Mentor. Secondly, we offer um, a wide range of business education programs, uh, roughly about 100 throughout the year, like the one today. And lastly, we offer extensive resources on our website, including access to subject matter experts and business tools. Our next live webinar will be next Tuesday, June 21st at noon. And the topic is Securing Your Future with Entrepreneurship with Michael Rosen presenting. And again, you can find more specifics on our website. If you're on our website, we also have a large number of recorded webinars that cover a wide range of business topics, and you can view those webinars at any time just by clicking on on-demand webinars. Uh, just some logistics for today. Uh, we've set aside time for Q&A at the end of the presentation, um, but I'm sure that uh, Kate will also maybe take some questions along the way as well. And if you have a question, please use the Q&A button that is at the bottom of your screen, and you can type your question in at any time during the presentation. We will end our webinar sharply at one o'clock to respect your time. The session is being recorded and a link to the recording will be available on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next day or so. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Kate Bird. Kate has 25 plus years in technology and strategic marketing, focusing on helping companies grow, go public and secure venture capital funding. She built two social media and mobile based businesses before 2008 and she has deep experience in content marketing and influencer communities. Kate built global PR for Gardner in the 90s and helped KPMG Consulting go public. And currently, Kate is Development and Operations Director with the Stanford Partnership and has been a SCORE volunteer since 2009. I'll now turn it over to Kate. Kate, it's all yours. Need you to unmute there, Kate. Huh. There, there you go. Thank you very much, Bob, and welcome everybody to another fabulous SCORE webinar. It's a good way to spend your lunch hour and I appreciate your time. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about the overall digital marketing mix before we get into some of the, the details regarding customer experience and digital content. Um, just uh, looking at the landscape of earned, owned and paid uh, media. Increasingly earned and owned, as you may be aware, have become the advertisement of the old days, meaning that in the fading world of paid click advertising, social media is really taking its place and uh, digital marketing uh, using a variety of different types of content are uh, really coming into the fore to take the place of the old um, paid model. And having said that, the optimal mix leverages all of these things. And certainly paid advertising has its place depending on budgets and depending on size of business. But uh, one more point on that, on the red circle, the earned, um, Really, we're talking about customer reviews and if a blogger or a newspaper or a magazine writes about you, uh, posts made by users themselves, mentions and so forth, those are things that are earned. And uh, I think those are probably where we'll spend most of our time um, this hour. A note on CX, you may see this term around a lot and it, it really uh, is an abbreviation for customer experience. And I think how you ensure a great customer experience is really focusing on clear and concise 
messaging. Um, and we can talk a little bit more of that in a, uh, in a moment. And also consistency in your communications. You can see I was really feeling the alliteration here when I created this slide. Um, considering uh, Consider your community. That's the last thing. You really you know, use your empathy um, muscles uh, increasingly as a business owner or as um, uh, an entrepreneur who wants to start a business. Think how you like to be treated as a customer. Think about how you receive information and how you like to interact. And that uh, is, is uh, uh, what I mean by consider the community. I also mean consider yourself not an island, but really work with the community, share and, um, and um, provide support to fellow businesses that, that aren't just potential partners, but maybe are in the same neighborhood. If you have a physical location, uh, be supportive, be uh, present. Um, that has uh, not only good human uh, feedback for you, but really good business feedback as people, uh, uh, one of the uh, rules of uh, influence is reciprocity. And that's actually the first one. And that really has to do with we as humans, if someone does uh, a good deed for us, we're likely to want to repay that. And the folks that I see online who are doing uh, excellent work and are, are developing great followings um, are are able to take some of their time to devote to supporting uh, other people's social efforts and digital marketing efforts. So that's uh, my speech on the community. And then consistency uh, is important. And um, let me use a quick example on consistency. Let's, uh, let's say you have, you're a restaurant or a wine bar and you have wines on special in your restaurant. Um, ideally, it would be great to feature those same wines on a social post, for example, and then perhaps in a story or a reel on, uh, say, Instagram, uh, maybe somebody enjoying that wine and uh, the text underneath mentioning that specific wine. And then perhaps just to take that a little further, let's say you do a weekly uh, flash in email to subscribers, you might have a discount on that wine for people who uh, come into the store, I mean, uh, into the restaurant. My point there being that if I have seen that you have a special in the store, it really is reinforcing to me to see that in multiple touch points and also to have a consistent uh, vision. And I think as, as, um, as consumers, we are increasingly expecting that, um, that consistency. And when we we don't have that. It's not a deal breaker sometimes, but it, it does feel less um, cohesive as an experience. And so that's, um, that's something that I recommend. On the bottom there, talking about testing, this is just really the plumbing of your business. Uh, before you do any of the things that we're going to talk about regarding content, um, test your website on all, all devices. And there are testing sites online that are free. And you would just type in, uh, how do I test speed for my website? There are many different free tools to just simply test load speed. And that's very important because uh, research has shown, um, especially on mobile devices, that if, it, if your website is taking longer than a few seconds, and I mean three seconds to load, you're gonna lose people uh, and they are gonna drop off. So you really wanna create speed and clarity um, for a great customer journey. Um, so that's, uh, that's sort of the, the meat and, and uh, the vegetables and we'll, we'll have a little bit more fun going forward here. Um, in terms of content marketing itself, this is uh, Neil Patel is an expert uh, marketing and writer. Um, he talks about content marketing being a long-term strategy that uses content in all kinds of different formats to really build a strong relationship with your audience and, and capture their attention and improve their engagement uh, in your products and services and improve brand recall. M make sure that, that they remember you and that, they, and that you come to mind when they are making a brand uh, or service choice uh, going forward.
And so one of the things I think is probably the biggest headline on this slide is the long term part. I think it's uh, it, it, it can um, be challenging sometimes with all the business pressures and schedule uh, that um, small businesses have against them. Um, but um, the folks that stick with it, it will you do see uh, dividends paid, but uh, it doesn't happen in an overnight fashion. So when you're looking at uh, your business and growth, marketing growth, you really, you know, in the old days when uh, budgets, media budgets were done for companies a uh, year in advance, uh, you would put together a budget and I, uh, typically uh, between eight and 12% of your revenue, uh, of the money that you uh, earned as a business goes to marketing and it has to be allocated to marketing in order to meet your growth targets. No different for any other business. So if you haven't or aren't spending on that, and that means perhaps even your time spent away from other things or hiring some help uh, either outside or inside your business, you really should devote that, uh, that revenue uh, for growth purposes. But um, to look at the uh, content here on this slide, uh, most businesses, regardless of size, have one of these three goals for their content marketing. The top is, uh, is probably one that we'll focus on a lot today. I know there are a lot of new businesses out there. Um, just improving brand awareness. Perhaps you are new in the market and you really want to be thought of as experts in your field. So that may be your marketing goal, your content marketing goal, or you want to increase new leads. Uh, and it also could be in addition, and you want to increase new leads and you want to improve search rankings for um, targeted keywords. I actually, uh, I want to change that last one. Targeted keywords is, is, is not really um, uh, as much uh, of a focus uh, in Google search now. Uh, the web many years ago, um, Google turned its search uh, algorithms to semantic web, which means, and you probably are well aware, as you type in something, you type in a question just as you would speak it. Uh, so keywords are not as important as, as clear communication about what your brand does, where you're located, uh, who you help, um, and the types of things. Certainly keywords come into that, but it isn't, uh, it isn't just plugging a list of keyword words in, it's really speaking the English language. So in terms of building a strategy, oh, oh, you know what? I want to talk a little bit, one more thing about this. So you might say, why, why bother with all this? And one thing I want to leave you with is if all of your competition are really getting good at content, um, digital content, and you're not showing up online uh, for people when they're looking uh, on all the various platforms, you cease to exist. So... The reason for doing digital marketing is if you are not in, in just a few years time, all of the things that you're doing well, um, uh, you may not be going to get credit for and you'll start to uh, lose traction as a business. So it's really an imperative. Some key questions you should be asking when you're building your strategy is who are we trying to reach? Who is my community of users, of passionate, you know, lovers of what I'm offering? Um, and what problems are they facing um, that I can help them resolve? Or you know, what desires do they have if it's, uh, if it's a, a, a service, uh, a leisure service or, a, or an entertainment service? And uh, where and, and when are you most likely to engage with them? So for example, of course, if you're a theater or a restaurant, um, you know, you're going to engage with people right, uh, right on the way uh, on their mobile devices, probably an hour or less before they're uh, likely to show up to your to your venue that that is uh, important to keep in mind. Um, certainly when you're posting things online, uh, you know, to consider the habits of your prospects and users. Uh, and, and get in front of them at the timeliest um, moment for that. Um, and then also, um, really on a practical level, how can I create a piece of content and use it in a variety of ways in order to save me time and um, again, uh, 
you know, to be consistent. And, and you know, as human beings, uh, we love patterns and uh, we like to be in the know and we are seeking uh, pattern recognition. And um, so it is, you don't want to be boring and use one format always, always, always. And sometimes it's good to shape, uh, change things up. But if you have a piece of content that you can reuse in different formats uh, for a period of time, that's excellent. And that's also practical. You know, on that note, let's just take uh, uh, a concept here uh, for a moment. And let's say you are a career coach and you have developed this business as a consultant to help people um, uh, navigate through uh, an interesting job market, to say the least right now. Um, these are just some uh, ideas. So maybe you develop a tip sheet on ways to improve uh, professional networking skills. And so take that piece of content, you might have it on your website. And, and this is obviously not revolutionary. This is uh, pretty standard stuff, but I just thought I'd outline it for you as an example. You would put it on your website and, uh, and on your social channels and perhaps no click to receive, you would be able to um, get permission to uh, have an ongoing conversation with those folks and be able to speak to them about your services. Um, you know, you could take each, you could break those tips down and you could highlight each of them in a very short format um, in posts. And that could be, you know, just in text form. It does not need to be, uh, uh, you know, you being videotaped if, if you don't care to. Um, I'm sure you see plenty of those online. Uh, I think the, you know, the stories function on Instagram is quick and easy to use. I'm seeing a lot of businesses do it very successfully. Um, now, uh, on this item about social proof, so social proof is another rule of influence, um, and this has to do with um, our human um, uh, propensity to see um, if others are doing it, we are also uh, uh, likely to join in and do it. And um, so if you have people commenting on your, so on your social post, um, that will uh, gain you some um, proof of, of concept, if you will. And, uh, and it, it, it shows that people are, are supportive and that, um, and that will encourage others to engage. Um, and that's just very easy to do is just ask a couple people in your business uh, sphere and, and circle to provide support. And maybe additionally, you offer it to a co-working space, for example, and that's free content and you're offering it to them on their website uh, as a giveaway. And then maybe you create a little uh, short 15 second uh, video series of people offering their tips. That's just riffing on the same general idea. So uh, I find this a very interesting uh, piece uh, that, of research that I found on uh, Bill Gates said the future of search is verbs. And in four different categories, uh, he talks about, um, I want to know moments, I want to go moments, I want to do and I want to buy. So I want to know is the general news and information. I want to go is location specific, as I just referenced, that might be something nearby or close uh, at hand. I want to do would be how to, you know, how, how to grow tomatoes or fix your dishwasher. And I want to buy uh, reviews, information, research on product or, or the purchase that I'm about to make. Um, so again, no, it's no longer as much about the keywords as much as filling the void with useful and sometimes really critical information. And so when people are engaging on their digital devices, they're really focused on these four things. Uh, it's got to be one of those four things, I think, is his point. So getting into a couple of um, interesting uh, examples that will help uh, create um, uh, some uh, creative uh, ideas for you. What's new right now and has been for probably the last couple of years is really a continued move toward authenticity and uh, re real realness and imperfection. And I'll show you an example in a second about that. And light and more playful content, much more creative content, less uh, polished and uh, um, you know agency style perfection. Um, use of video more all the time. And, and, and also obviously uh, the explosion of podcasts and um, platforms like 
uh, Twitter spaces and, and Clubhouse, which is sort of boom, bloomed and then sort of wilted, um, but out there and important in the overall mix. Uh, if you can develop uh, you know, a passionate audience, I, I hesitate to encourage anyone at this point on the podcast thing, unless you really uh, think you can, you can, you know, build an audience, and it's a niche offering. I think that would be. I'm not an expert, but it seems to me that we've got a um, a flood of, uh, of of podcasts right now, and perhaps there's only so much time for people to engage. Here's an example I found in last week's New York Times, um, which I thought was kind of a. Um, an interesting in the style section, an interesting example, you know, a very uh, out of focus, blurry set of photographs, um, which frankly I found um, in the style section, you know, not typical at all and eye catching. And um, so I thought it would be interesting to just talk about that a little bit. I don't have anything like pithy to say other than, look, it's blurry. <laughs> it made me look. So talking about video, 82% um, of web traffic is now video. So I would obviously em emphasize the, the uh, criticality of, of moving toward video if you haven't already. And, um, you know, I highlighted the two that are most likely to be useful, although TikTok, uh, as I've been seeing, is, in, is um, yeah, increasingly an option uh, for uh, folks, especially if you're marketing to the 30, 35 and under. Um, I'd love to hear thoughts on this call uh, via the chat. If people are having uh, success in uh, YouTube or in feed videos, um, TikTok, interesting, just a, a wow, I didn't know that uh, thing, and maybe you did, um, is that kids were using this a few years ago right before pandemic or maybe right during the lockdown to post their own videos on TikTok to talk about their um their bona fides basically a, a video cv and TikTok noticed and smartly created a a button uh for people to use for resumes uh, and so now this is a very popular HR tool <laughs> and recruiters and HR professionals are using TikTok to find candidates. So that just sort of encapsulates the move toward uh, video and uh, mass in society and, and uh, digital uh, world. I'm gonna take a second here to look at chat. One moment. Okay, um, so I see somebody's had a, a huge success in TikTok. My account went from a thousand followers to 16,000 in less than a year. And so, yeah, Liz, we'd love Marquita James, please uh, elaborate on chat and I'll carry on here. Love to hear more about it. I love TikTok, I think it's really a terrific platform. So here's a, a fun example. Um, Don Heyman's a friend of mine who is um, uh, a communications strategist and a writer. And he's been that probably in that business for more than 25 or 30 years. And um, while he's established, like any freelance or consultant, he always needs to be looking for the next client or project. And um, he was posting here and there on LinkedIn, which is his choice of platform for obvious reasons, the uh, business to business nature of it. But he wasn't really getting a lot of uh, traction and he needed to break through the noise and really show the value, not tell, but but really, you know, show, which is always better and stay top of mind when somebody needed help. So he started uh, two, I think maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, he started using real life examples and providing ex excellent advice, actually, and a lot of times using his sense of humor in, in those uh, as well, not in this particular one, but many times he does. And really offering free samples. Um, he's excellent at grammar because he's a very good writer and he's showing a, um, a tip here. And uh, he gets regularly, this is even one of the lower ones, he regularly gets over 50, 75 um, you know, likes and many comments and starts some really interesting conversations. Another good example is 
Barrel House Z, which is a brewery in Massachusetts. And this happens to be my future sister-in-law, uh, my fiance's sister and her husband have this brewery. She uh, impressively built up her Insta followers to over 8,000. Actually, I would love to check that now and see where they're at because we talked uh, about a year ago and she was looking for some help. And uh, hold on one second, I'm just gonna look here. Um, Okay, so she's up to 9,700 followers. So she's just under 10,000 now. And, you know, as importantly uh, as followers really, I think is engagement. Um, and in any case, she was sort of burned out on her posting uh, and she needed some new ideas, new strategies to uh, juice her, uh, her efforts for her marketing. So, and we talked about her goals. Um, she was looking to grow her Instagram audience uh, through her impressions and, and, and grow that, uh, you know, uh, that overall reach and improve that engagement um, through uh, profile visits and you know, shares, saves, likes, and, and, the, uh, and similar. So we did a brainstorm and then I put a couple thoughts together. And um, one thing I, I uh, uh, was very focused on is their beautiful labels. They don't just do beer, they also are doing hard seltzers um, naturally. And their labels are stunning designs. They have a, a, a really great designer at the, uh, that, that works with them. So my thought was using some of those great software uh, uh, animation tools, which are very inexpensive, that you can show the motion of the design uh, and really feature the design and the beauty of it. Uh, another idea being um, portraying, uh, I really thought she would would benefit and she's now doing a lot of um, just slow motion like product uh, movement, development of maybe the beer. Sometimes they show that being made, pouring of the drink, very simple stuff, but a lot more motion and frankly, a lot sexier uh, from an image standpoint, conveying the fun of the brand. Um, and then, you know, finding young customers to be uh, a brand ambassador on TikTok. And this was a uh, a concept which I'm not sure she has yet done, but that was another idea we had. Also, by the way, they're very popular in the community. Uh, they do, uh, they host, an, you know, a dog uh, group because they have a big backyard that they blew out uh, a, a, a back, you know, they have a good size uh, uh, brewery uh, uh, location. Uh, the venue is a good size in Weymouth. And, um, during COVID, they extended it more and, and started doing the, you know, various groups, uh, the runners group, a dog group, and, you know, becoming a community hub, a third place, if you will, um, which I think is a terrific idea and has benefited them. They were able to survive and actually thrive uh, past this, um, the um, pandemic. I think it's important to really talk about measurement because, um, you know, you can get caught up in the, um, the mechanics of the, the things that you're trying to accomplish, but really you've got to, and it will be uh, motivating to sort of check where you are and then execute some tactics uh, and then check, you know, if, it, if it's been effective. The great thing about digital marketing, unlike uh, years ago, there's no you know, finality, you, everything is iterative and you can adjust and move forward and adjust and test. And that's totally fine. And uh, we're all learning all the time. Uh, and that's, that, that is, I think clients are forgiving and prospects are forgiving if you're authentic in your efforts. And those are some of those um, uh, ways that you might measure um, your results. Content Marketing Institute's an excellent resource I would recommend from a content uh, perspective. Um, uh, really terrific uh, seminars, webinars, uh, you know, documents there. But here are some things they talk about. Unique visits. I mean, how many people are viewing it, obviously. Um, where are they coming from? Are these people even relevant to your offering? Well, if you're selling something online, anybody is relevant. But if you are a local place, maybe, you know, you know, that's interesting to look at and where you're drawing audience from. Um, 
also, you know, how are they taking in the information? What devices? Um, bounce rates are important. Page views, comments, shares. You know, uh, it can be very simple sometimes just to make an adjustment and and see change. So I was working with a nonprofit in Bolivia uh, a couple of years ago and helping uh, guide this visionary leader, um, and she was helping abused and um, uh, women who were attacked, um, you know, uh, sexually um, assaulted in court. She's a trained lawyer. In any case, she had wonderful content, very gripping, very authentic because she is an authentic human. And but she was posting everything on Facebook. And after we talked, I said, I don't I don't think your your people are on Facebook. They're probably on Instagram. And she shifted and saw a very big change in her uh, engagement and her her reach there. So I think uh, just a, a, a platform, you know, adjustment uh, can be very, very helpful. And that's uh, the Marketing Institute's uh, website. So, I, you know, I think the people that I see out there that are that are continuing to not only survive uh, the ups and downs of the economic uh, situations that we find ourselves in, but who are really thriving are looking at the changes. They're not becoming experts, you know, as you know, go to school and and uh, devote, you know, 80 percent of your time, but they are embracing those those changes and they are learning. They're learning to learn more quickly, never mind your age. I mean, a 70 year old um, um, events business um, owner, she did actually uh, take a little time off and went to LA and, and did an in-depth in one week long uh, digital marketing seminar. And uh, in addition to her uh, other, you know, score uh, coaching and, and mentoring she was getting um, and somebody that she hired, she's really changed her uh, trajectory as a business because she knew she needed to uh, continue to sharpen those skills regardless of you know how excellent her business was she was getting usurped by younger players who were just more agile on digital uh, platforms and so she wanted to close that gap and she successfully has done so it didn't happen overnight though it it, it took more than a year to do that so always learning and are passionate about it. And, and uh, that's part of, you know, embracing the, the learning, the, the uh, growth mindset. My niece, who's a teacher, uh, has informed me that the growth mindset is, uh, is a thing. So let's talk about you guys. Let's talk about your business and how to create dynamic content and, uh, and, cre and engage your creative muscles. Um, so that's a painting of mine, speaking of creative muscles. So here we go. I want to go back to this question that we had, um, or this TikTok example. Hopefully we've gotten details here. Uh, Kate, just while we're doing that, um, just a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, um, please use the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. And if you've got some uh, comments to make, you could also make them in the chat. But uh, if we can get the questions in the Q&A um, queue, that would um, help us the most. Yeah. So in talking about, I'm just going to go uh, to Dr. Sharon uh, Weichman. Um, how did that increase your actual business and sales? I, I don't uh, exactly know. It, it, to what you're referring to, how do your followers translate into solid sales? Okay, followers. So it, as in any um, marketing efforts, there is a journey that that your customer follows and, it, and the, the beginning of that journey is making them aware of you and then meeting them with relevant information um, to meet their need. And that, that could be buying a major piece of equipment and that's in a business to business setting, that process may be achieved uh, through uh, content on your website and or on LinkedIn. Um, and if they signed up to be part of um, you know, a newsletter, you can send them information. And the, the way you become relevant is to ask for them to tell you more about what their needs are. And that can be done through survey tools. So in, in this example, you're building a dialogue, you're building trust, credibility, and a relationship with that person. And that would then 
translate into sales. But the beginning of that has to be getting noticed. And that is happening uh, to you know refer back to the beginning of my presentation, uh, you know, more predominantly, more and more uh, on on social platforms uh, and frankly, just in the digital stream uh, and being found uh, and and your website having clear, updated, you know, current, concise information about what you offer and who you help and how. Kate, so the answer, oh, uh, sorry, Bob, go ahead. Go ahead. No, um, Kate, there was an earlier question that came in in, in the chat um, that I believe was directed to you. It, it says, have you done a real estate website and can you share any examples on how to link with the ML listing and increase new leads? So very specific <laughs> mm. okay so i mean i you know i'm not a website builder um but um if you're in real estate as my sister is um um she she's not into this the digital stuff though she's doing it the old school sneaker method as we used to call it bob right um but you know frankly all of the things that i've talked about would very well uh, apply uh to to real estate and, and um you know, real estate, first of all, um, it's seemingly hugely popular um, armchair kind of uh, pastime for a lot of us, uh, you know, to wit, uh, Zillow is one of the biggest sites out there. So knowing that you can use your excellent, hopefully, video on your camera, on your mobile device, and shoot a 15 second sweep shot of your listing and, you know, put some uh, one punchy uh, bit of text on there, and you could use that in reels or stories on, you know, uh, also uh, on your own website, if you have your own agent website, which a lot of uh, brokers and agents do. Um, of course, the MLS listing uh, is, is um, searchable online through the hashtag, and uh, that number is transferable all kinds of, in all kinds of ways. I would also say increasingly, as I'm sure you guys are seeing through ticket sales now that things have opened up, QR codes have made a uh, triumphant return. Um, 10 years ago, uh, when I was running uh, uh, an influencer marketing company, uh, QR codes were, were part of the mix, but we were trying to force it with, um, with a lot of marketers and brands. And there was the impediment was that people had to download software in order to interact with the code, which was a deal breaker. Now uh, uh, that step has, uh, has been um, eliminated and therefore you only hover your, you know, your camera over a code and it's activated uh, and you can click right through. That is, that is transformative. I would encourage anyone on this call with any kind of business to look at QR codes. They are not um, difficult to implement. You can learn by going on YouTube and ask, and this goes for any question you have, type in, you know, how do I use QR codes for my small business? And I have never done that, but I assure you there will be some fascinating and uh, interesting educational video. Um, you know, the, first, the biggest search engine in the world is Google and the second is YouTube and it is owned by Google. And that is uh, video search is, 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 a, is your professor at will there. Um, so hopefully I've answered a little bit of those questions there. Hey, um, maybe we can turn, there's, we have a, a few questions in the uh, Q&A queue, um, if I can uh, maybe move to those. Um, here's one from Deanna. I'm an educational consultant. What are your thoughts on branding and increasing my followers? Mm -hmm. An education consultant. So So I would say that you are probably big in a staff, you know, one, two of the things you need to do for someone who, who has not encountered you are building um, credibility and trust. And so how do you build credibility and trust? That's not through cutesy uh, eye-catching video. That is not your game. Your game is much more uh, almost like a business to business sale, which is information based and knowledge based um, marketing. And that might translate into um, 15 minute uh, a dinner 
uh, you know, maybe I'm just brainstorming here. Uh, uh, table, what do they call it during the political season? Um, dinner table chats, you know, uh, kitchen table conversations or something that you might have, um, you might do an interview with a former student and talk about um, uh, the benefits and uh, gained through the consulting work that you've done. Um, create a, a checklist and put that um, on your website that talks about the things that parents need to think about. Um, you know, these ideas may not be appropriate. I don't know too much about what your what your business is, but. Um, I think my point is it's information-based marketing that gets into the path of the potential um, buyers. Now that may be next door. Um, you know, next door is is an up and coming uh, platform which a lot of people are using for where do I find a you know a good plumber kind of services. But why not uh, you know. Uh, put in there um, that you are, you know, offering, um, you, you're starting a 10 minutes, you know, series um, on uh, Thursday nights um, during the summer to talk about getting ready for, for college or, you know, something uh, that's a little bit different. But I think the point is you're giving away some free knowledge. You're giving a free sample away. That sounds a little clunky to me, but I'm, I'm, I haven't really thought deeply, obviously, here. Um, um, what other thoughts might I, you know, um, I think, you know, reviews, uh, that social proof is very, very important. So, um, reviews are always important for every business for yours. I would, you know, I would gather recommendations and referrals or, you know, uh, references rather, and I would use those in quotes, you don't need to put the person's name, just put it, it's called a jump quote in, uh, in advertising, I think. And it does not need to be attributed, um, you know, customer of, you know, a client of a 18 year old, you know, 16 year old uh, uh, sophomore. Um, I think let other people do your talking for you is my point there. Okay, that's great. Lots of, lots of good ideas there. Here's um, one from uh, Sue. We are starting a nonprofit that teaches drone technology to girls. We are not agile. We are, are um, arthritic in the digital world. Any suggestions? Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let the girls do your some of your work for you. Um, you know that is a sexy, fun nonprofit, and I think it is exciting as all get out. And I would personally, I would take um stock of the young women that you're working with and find or find um an intern that can work with them and um you can uh you know perhaps you make a contest out of it and feature them with permission from parents it, it doesn't have to be them feature their videos um and um um maybe i don't know what kind of uh what kind what you're doing with the drones i was listening to podcast the other night about drone racing and that's a really big sport uh it's getting to be a a, a growing sport and uh all i all i heard was from you know 25 year old guys you know uh, but they were at the top of their field of drone racing and they said oh we're getting eclipsed by the you know the 16 year olds who are coming up behind us and now they're winning the money that's out there to be won but in any case, I would I would look to you know if you're arthritic, then get some help from the younger generation there. Yeah, it seems like this one might be an, an ideal uh, to use uh, TikTok with this kind of audience. So. I think so. Yeah, and I also think Snap uh, Snapchat, although I'm not hearing as much about it, I I, I think TikTok's probably right, Bob. Um, I would um, you know. I would invest in making your site, and this is important from a plumbing standpoint, make your site uh, excellent. Uh, and, and if it isn't already with video, make sure it's fast and be, make sure that you have um, a site that can, that can um, host, um, you know, you don't personally have to host, you know, use a, a, a hosting service, um, but host video because the reason uh, for that is not only to show instead of tell what you're doing,
but also um, because Google uh, several years ago started uh, favoring video content over anything else. And so that is, you are almost penalized if you are not using video. So this, this goes for everybody, uh, actually. I should have uh, mentioned that little point. Um, so I would uh, definitely do that. And, and um, also as a nonprofit, um, you know, some digital tools that are not social uh, in nature, but are digital uh, proof, get, make sure you are on all listings for nonprofits and charitable uh, organizations, because you know, all of these digital touch points on the web, and it's called the web for a reason, uh, they all converge to sort of uh, make a clear picture of you and what you're offering and, and to validate um, potential um, customers' uh, opinions of you, to validate you as a, as a business. Okay, just um, a reminder, if you um, have more questions, we got lots of time uh, and you want to type them into the Q&A, we'll take as many as we can until the top of the hour. Uh, we do have one from Liz. Um, I have a service business. I am a hypnotherapist. Uh, due to confidential confidentiality, I really can't share client stories. What could I post about? Mm, that's interesting. Um, so... You're dealing here with, um, you know, probably some habits that people are trying to, and behaviors that people are, are, are trying to change. And so in the abstract, these can, these are very relatable things, um, whether we're talking about smoking, uh, you know, drinking, uh, the need to exercise, take care of ourselves better, um, those are, those are things that are, are certainly relatable and uh, of interest to a, f a fair number of, of people. Um, so you can talk about them in the abstract without um, uh, valid, uh, uh, violating any um, you know, HIPAA type of um, things and confidentiality things. Um, I've seen that done effectively with um, people who are energy workers and healer uh, in that category, uh, therapists, using uh, stories and and um, and posts on Insta and done with you know what you might call slideshows, you know uh, where there's a, a number of images and some text over it to convey a small story, and I think that might be an effective uh, tactic for you. Um, I would also be sure um, that you are um, maybe part of some groups, not only offline, online, you know, uh, LinkedIn has all kinds of professional groups and you could offer your um, advice and, and, and counsel uh, through group sharing. And that goes for uh, any business and um, uh, an important uh, point because it, it is really about supporting your community and becoming known and credible and an authority in the area uh, of your uh, of your expertise. Um, thanks. Lots of lots of good suggestions there on, a, on kind of a, di a difficult uh, area. Yeah. Um, let's have a follow up uh, question. Um, I'm trying to increase my search ranking. How do I do that? And, and be maybe for you respond, because I'm sure you'll have some ideas as well, Kate. Um, Liz, there, we have scores done a number of um, webinars on this. And um, if you want to go to the on-demand webinar list, there's some very good ones recently on how do I get found on Google and how to improve your search ranking and things like that. So that would be one resource I would point you to, but I'm sure our expert Kate would have some suggestions as well. Yeah, well, Bob, you, you and I are thinking along the same lines because there are not too many weeks that go by uh, without me recommending a particular um, score video that I was lucky enough to uh, to catch live that you guys did with uh, Nalini uh, Gulsran uh, and her SEO, you know, 50 or 60 minute um, video was absolutely fantastic. And she had 10 things that anybody can go in and physically do. You do not need to be an expert in technical or rather digital um, or IT 
these are things that are settings and, and tactical things that you can do to, to align with Google's rules and algorithms. And I found it absolutely illuminating. And I've been in uh, the space for a pretty long time, but I just found she was very accessible in this particular one. And Bob, um, I, I think it was, um, you know, she used her business name, was it, it's Edge Space, is that right? Correct. Okay, and uh, Nalini is her first name, N-A-L-I-N-I. -I. Um, anyway, I, I think that's one thing. Um, educate yourself. There are, you know, literally millions of, of videos. So I would become, you know, less um, clueless. If you're clueless about SEO, get get a little bit deep on it and and spend a little time on it. Spend a couple of hours that you'd prefer to be out, you know, playing tennis on the weekend, learning about this because it is important for your business. And it is a, a topic that, you know, once you understand it from a high level, you can, um, you can incorporate it into a lot of things that you're doing. And uh, just to touch back and answer the question uh, to close this out, the semantic, um, web changes that that Google made in their algorithm a number of years ago made life very much uh, easier for us as marketers and as businesses, because you really just need to be specifically descriptive and clear about what you're offering on your web page. So if you're if you need to improve that, maybe you need to do an audit of your home page and your various landing pages to ensure that they are all cl uh, clearly describing not only if you're based in Norwalk, Connecticut, or in Des Moines, Iowa, you know, that you can have a client that's, you know, quoted and saying, you know, in all of, you know, I think this is the best service in all of Iowa. I don't know. I'm just thinking of ideas. But anyway, anyway, I think you need to be not only geographically uh, specific product and service uh, descriptive uh, specific um, and using plain English. And, you know, um, for the real estate uh, broker or agent on the call there, I would say, you know, I've seen excellent informational, um, you know, content on, on websites for brokers that are uh, important info, quick tips for when you're, when you're hunting in a hot market, you know, just being of service and offering additional info and and becoming a more uh, like filling in the the around the edges of who you are and becoming a, a person of knowledge and authority can be very helpful and be help you keep uh, top of mind when someone uh, has a question regarding real estate or whatever. I want to go back to um, a question that uh, Lucinda had in, in chat a little while ago, and there was some back, back and forth. And um, she's asking, is there an easy way to find freelance uh, content writers? Because I'm not great at writing and I'm busy running my business. So task goals gets put further down the list. Yeah. Um, there was a Fiber. couple of, of, of yeah. good responses in there on, on, uh, on uh, Fiverr, yeah. was, Fiverr was suggested. Yep. And also freelancer was, uh, was suggested. Um, I've also had score clients who have um, obtained writers through Upwork. Upwork is excellent. Yeah. Another one that I, that I would suggest. And what I would also suggest, Lucinda, is if you're going to engage these content writers, invest the time to give them a good outline of what you want the content to be to avoid the number of back and forth and, um, and drafts, if you like. You can streamline it. If you if you can give them a good outline, it'll make your life easier. Kate, oh, I'm sure you got yeah. some suggestions as well. That's a great great point, Bob. And and I think you know these folks on Upwork, I've had excellent uh, luck with as well, Bob. And and the incredibly um, good work ethic. I've I've worked with people who like the turnaround is phenomenal. It's 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 um, head spinning. And but to your point, got to give them the tools to be able to do it. And you know, there's nothing wrong with looking at um, big brands, big budgets, or other organizations that you admire or who are doing it very well and who you think look the, is the look you want, the feel. Give them examples. Just 
you know, copy some links and say, I, I, I kind of really like the way they've done this, you know, and so help them understand, put them in the picture of it. And as you say, Bob, to, to save the time of the back and forth, give them just real solid examples. Okay, we have a, a new question from, uh, from Deborah. I, I sell earth friendly sweater knitted organic cotton baby blankets. My passions are nature, the environment, sweater design, and one primarily Facebook and some on Instagram. What do you think are my best platforms and what types of videos should I be creating? Oh my gosh, that sounds so nice. Um, I, you know, to me, it feels like, what would I say? It feels like an obvious uh, choice would be the, um, Sorry, I was just, I, my head just went in a couple different directions. Um, oh, I think I was gonna say was you, you probably have, while it might be small, a passionate customer base and people who love the same things you love, have the same value system. They also really love their babies <laughs> and they love the products that you're, you're, you know, you're offering them, which are all about good feels. And so uh, this might be an example of, you know, turn to that passionate, maybe it's small, maybe it's big, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> user base and use their words to help you extract, you know, the, the, uh, the, the value. And, and I want to emphasize that this is not, none of these things have to be uh, extremely long in nature. I'm a big believer in less is more and brevity, even though my slides <laughs> wouldn't tell you that some, some of these slides. Um, I would, you know, for example, let's say you, you reach out to one of your, uh, you know, recent clients and, you know, with, with a, I'd love to use your, a few of your words in, in some social that we're doing, you know, here's a 20% discount, you know, for, your next purchase and, you know, in exchange for, you know, offer me some thoughts or look at reviews online, ask for reviews and just take one word that they've used, um, you know, or a phrase soft as, as, you know, a feels like a touching a cloud, you know, or, um, you know, brought tears to my, my husband's eyes, you know, I'm just, you know, brainstorming here, but things that are evocative, that are emotional because people react to emotion then, and they are sold on the basis of our emotions. And then we seek to rationalize our decisions on fact. And that's important to bear in mind for all of our marketing efforts. We we are emotional creatures and then we rationalize and, and back our uh, decisions up. Uh, hopefully we see the, the, uh, the backing that we need. And sometimes we, we don't, but we, we have a way of um, rationalizing <laughs> even if they aren't good decisions. Um, but that's another, another topic. <laughs> Kate, one, I'm, I'm not an expert on either of these two platforms, but the nature of uh, what Deborah's trying to sell here would, would, maybe perhaps uh, platforms like Pinterest or Etsy um, mm. maybe be- um, Oh my gosh, that's a great, great- Would be suggestion. aligned with this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a really great suggestion, Bob. And I'm I, um, trying to think if I've, um, did I include that in my listing here? I didn't, that is a real big oversight. Pinterest is fantastic. And for a while there, about 10 years ago, they were, um, leading the uh, charge in terms of uh, uh, commerce, driving revenue for businesses through, you know, because it's so easy to see, to be inspired, to click through and to buy. Um, that is, um, I mean, it can be done on a lot of platforms now. And I uh, recently recommended to a SCORE client, um, Shopify, you know, uh, I said, you know, gosh, it's an uphill battle now trying to get people to come to your website. I mean, you've, you've got to have it up to speed in the ways that we've covered today, but you can uh, certainly use uh, out of the box things like a Shopify in order to enable commerce and to enable, you know, less friction. Um, but yes, just to come back, Bob, I think Pinterest is a, a fantastic thing. And one of the reasons is you can create, I forget what they're called, but different, you know, uh, you know, different panels for, uh, 
in different ways that you might slice it. Um, you know, so getting back to the hypnotherapist, when you're talking about habits and behaviors, you could have, I don't know if Pinterest is, it could be, it could be the platform for you. Um, you know, maybe it's aspirational and things that, you know, are looking to be accomplished and, you know, you, you, know, you can slice and dice vertically, I guess is where I'm going with that. Okay. Unfortunately, we are out of time and uh, it's all the time we have for, for questions. Just as a reminder to everyone, there was a couple of queries during the chat. Um, the session has been recorded and the materials will be available within the next day or so on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org under on-demand webinars. Our next live webinar will be next Tuesday, June 21st at noon. And the topic is securing your future with entrepreneurship with Michael Rosen presenting. And again, you can find more specifics on our website. If you'd like to take advantage of free individual counseling, you can use the link that we put up earlier, or you can go to our website and click on request a mentor. And if I could uh, also ask you to fill out your evaluations at the end of the webinar, that would really uh, help us going forward. On behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank everyone for attending our live webinar today. And in closing, a big thank you to Kate Bird for presenting and to our sponsor, First County Bank. So stay well, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, thank you. Kate. You're welcome. Thanks, everybody. Great suggestions, great ideas. Thanks, Jeff Siever.